Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, over the last few months, I've made a number of videos about Russia's agricultural miracle and how it's not only become self-sufficient in food production, but also a major exporter of a wide range of foodstuffs of both salt, raw and semi-finished products. Now, today I want to talk about the meat and livestock sector and how it's expanded also over the last two decades. Now, Russia's moved into fourth position among the world's leading meat and livestock producers. And this is what experts are calling yet another example of Russia's recent agricultural miracle, meat and livestock. Now, over the last 20 years, Russia's made significant strides in poultry and pork production. And it's achieving complete self-sufficiency, having previously had to rely heavily on imports. I mean, so what has taken place and what strategies have been employed to elevate the livestock farming in Russia from a position of serious weakness to this exalted level in only 20 years? Plus, what external factors have been involved and also why has beef production not yet reached the same level of success as other sectors of the meat and livestock sector? Well, the Prime Minister Mikhail Mishustin at a meeting with Roscom Bank's chairman Boris Litsov revealed that Russia had moved into fourth place among the world's largest meat and livestock producers. Now, the leading three are China, the USA and Brazil. Now, according to the National Meat Association of Russia, the volume of meat and meat products imported from the period 2003 to 2023 decreased from 2.6 million tonnes to 0 0.64 million tonnes. Notably, progress has been made in import substitution, particularly in the poultry and pork sectors. In the early 2000, meat imports reached 1.2 million tonnes. By 2023, this has fallen by 90% to 230,000 tonnes. Now, the import of pork and pork byproducts, including lard, reached a peak of 600,000 and 1.25 million tonnes between 2000 and 2010. Now, in the current year, pork imports are expected to be around only 3,000 tonnes, while exports are now projected to be approximately 300,000 tonnes. Now, the reduction of beef imports is not a result of success, but rather a shift in consumer preferences and a change in the cost structure of meat products. As other types of meat have become more affordable, consumers have begun to consume less beef. I mean, imports in 2003 reached 700,000 tonnes, and then by 2023 had decreased to 231,000 tonnes. This year, Russia will export around 40,000 tonnes of beef to other countries, said Yushchin of the National Meat Association. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, by <coughs> making a small donation, which can be done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me, and I'm thanking you all for just for watching because I do appreciate every viewer. So what factors contributed to Russia's success in poultry and pork production? Well, according to the Executive Committee Chairman of the National Meat Association, Sergei Houston, the following the 1990s through to the 2000s, the situation was particularly challenging. At that time, 70% of the consumption was uh, provided by imported old broiler meat, which was known as the Bush drumstick product. In the US, there was a surplus of drumsticks and they were popular among the Russian consumers. They were cheap and available, or cheapish. The investment in, were made in broiler production in Russia because it was accessible and understandable meat for Russians. Plus, there's no religious restrictions on the eating of chicken consumption. so. The payback period is also relatively short due to the quick production of the meat from chicken, unlike pig farming where the terms are several times longer and cattle farming where the capital costs are much higher. Now it's noteworthy that the initial significant investors in Russian poultry farmers were actually American investment funds which began actively investing in Russia after the crash of 1998. 
I mean, one of the most significant developments in the history of livestock farming was the appointment as the agricultural minister of Alexei Gordiev. He took the job when Putin came to power and he highlighted the potential risks associated with import dependence, noting that a man-made disaster or animal disease could have a significant impact on food security for Russians, so building their own supplies was necessary. Secondly, Russia had an extensive land available for feed and oilseed production, so why was it reliant on imported meat when it had enough to feed the livestock? The main issue, though, he believed, was the low and obvious negative productivity uh, and profitability of production. So he set the task of ensuring agricultural profitability. In 2005, the government introduced new customs and tariff regulations, including quotas for meat imports and high duties that went for any above the quota. This resulted in a rise in meat prices and increased revenues for Russian businesses. I mean, Europe employed similar measures to enhance its livestock farm in the aftermath of World War II. So Russia just did something it learned from others. Now, since 2005, the introduction of tariffs had led to the emergence of a secondary industry to investors in pig farming. I mean, a lumber of foreign companies, primarily German, Danish and French, also played a role in the development of modern pig farming. They not only came, they constructed their own pig farms, but provided expertise, knowledge, technological equipment, breeding materials, programs, genetic material, and all sorts of other things that added in to Houston. Now, the second significant phase was the rollout of the Russian government's national project for the development of the agro-industrial complex in 2006 to 2007. Now, this marked the inaugural instance of the state offering grants and preferential loans for livestock farming. I mean, the injection of state support and cheap money led to a notable shift in the attitude of the banking sector, with financial institutions becoming more willing to issue loans to companies for the construction and development of farming. And the third stage was obviously in 2008. The state programme for the development of agriculture, the regulation of the market for agricultural products, raw materials and foodstuffs, which ran for four years until 2012. I mean, the programme included a number of measures designed to support agricultural producers, including those engaged in livestock farming. These included grants and loans for the construction of new facilities and the modernisation of existing facilities as well as the implementation of zero-rate tariffs for the importation of uh, quality stuff for breeding materials. Significant financial resources were then allocated. Now, in 2012, Russia joined the World Trade Organization and measures were put in place to protect the market for livestock breeders. After all, they're the future. I mean, the state programme was then uh, extended as part of the agricultural uh, sovereignty programme by Vladimir Putin and over the last 10 years particularly a number of enterprises have been established in Russia. Now Russia up until uh, the imposition of sanctions closely collaborated with foreign companies in bringing the best equipment, technology, breeding materials and uh, on animal feed production. I mean, genetic companies worldwide uh, established a presence in Russia and offer training to local specialists. They invested significant resources into developing the breeding and selection in Russia and the outdated notion that collective farming is a dirty and unskilled occupation has now been dispelled. The industry has attracted highly educated and erudite active individuals and now the situation is very different, says Houston. I mean, obviously the growth in the income of the population in the 2000s also contributed to the Russian livestock miracle. I mean, as the economy expanded and people had more money in their pocket, so there's meat consumption. And there's been a notable increase in meat consumption in Russia over the past two decades. I mean, in 2003, per capita consumption of meat averaged 52 kilos has gone to 82 kilos in 2023. And that includes poultry, which went from 18 kilos to 36 kilos. Pork has gone from 17 kilos to 32 kilos, with a slight decline in beef consumption from 17 to th kilos to 13 ki kilos. 
Despite the import volumes, they were required to produce more and more, with the population demanding more favourable prices and enabling companies to secure new loans and invest in expansion. Russia established a number of new enterprises and created hundreds of thousands of new jobs. I mean, the development of the animal husbandry has driven the accelerated development of other crop production, particularly the construction of advanced feed mills, veterinary science, va vaccine production, etc. <coughs> now, it's evident that the cost of meat in Russia was artificially inflated at the early stages as livestock farming uh, took on due to the import restrictions. But during the initial time, uh, the price of meat was actually higher than the global average. However, the objective to enhance profitability and boost pr production worked, and the objective reached the point where competition in the market was so intense the meat would then become one of the cheapest uh, producers in the world. And that's what's happened. Over the past decade, Russia's actively engaged in export markets and they're competing in, with the imports in a challenging market. But the consumer demand has kept up with pace with the demand. Meat consumption, as I said, is 83 kilos per person, which is the level seen in the most highly developed countries. Consequently, the potential is now for exports. I mean, Russia now already supplies meat to over 60 countries worldwide, according to the Russian Export Federation. Now, the export of meat and meat products has grown exponentially over the past 20 years. I mean, it's a 22 fold increase is some increase from 36,000 tons in 2003 to 800,000 tons in 2023. I mean, Russia exported 343,000 tons of poultry, 223,000 tons of pork, and 36,000 tons of beef to other countries. And that's in 2023. And these are figures are only going to get higher in the future. Now, an important step was the country's leadership's understanding that the exports should be developed by the, uh, the government assistance. So other government departments, including the diplomatic service, the Ministry of Agriculture established a robust network of agriculture attaches at embassies abroad. The result was a significant increase in agricultural exports which reached $45 billion in 2023. Now, who could have foreseen that, according to Yushkin? Plus, uh, the current situation with expensive money has now begun to complicate matters. I mean, there's a realistic outlook in the industry that there might be a period of uh, slight stagnation in investment, which may lead to the lessening of the growth. I mean, the rush doesn't mean Russia will not be able to compete in global markets where loans are less expensive, but the people are not going to borrow to expand at an interest rate of 20 to 25 percent. Plus, the cost of construction has uh, increased due to the uh, price of construction materials and labour has gone up. So also, there's a shortage of workers with unemployment being so low in Russia. Although the potential for livestock growth in, is cattle. I mean, Russia hasn't really achieved its success it could have in the beef market. Although it's become a net exporter of high value marble beef that used to be imported from the US and Australia. I mean, the consumption of this premium meat has increased tenfold over the past decade, and a lot of it's now exported. But there have been no significant investments in the beef industry, with the exception of a few projects like the Militorka Aberdeen Angus beef uh, projects. Now, the payback pro uh, periods are the problem, they're lengthy. Now, so the cattle infrastructure is undeveloped and the profitability is actually low or even negative. So we're witnessing a, a sort of stagnation or possibly even a reduction in the cattle uh, population. Although Russia has a sufficient supply of beef and the option of importing if necessary from uh, countries like Brazil or Argentina. But Russia's beef is an opportunity for a next step, though it is a challenging one. It'll certainly need a, a similar level of investment or larger investment than you saw about uh, pig farming uh, or poultry. I mean, but as that said, Russian beef is still one of the cheapest in the world per, per price comparison. And that low price is actually deterring investors and slowing down the development of the industry. Anyway. 
Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and learning a bit more about Russia's agricultural miracle. You're probably all still feeling hungry. <laughs> right, thanks for that. And uh, do use the comment section. If you're feeling generous, press on the thanks button and drop me a donation. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.